Hi, welcome to Zach of All Trades, where I'm finally going to get started on the process of restoring this special little axe head. Yeah, I know. There's lots of axe restorations out there on YouTube. What makes this one so special? Well, first off, this is a cruiser axe. It's not just any old axe. It's a smaller axe carried by timber cruisers historically for marking trails or knocking little branches out of the way as they traveled. It's not exactly rare, rare, but you don't see them real often. You don't see them nearly as often as you do your other standard types of axes. So that makes it kind of cool. The second thing that makes it special is that it was my grandpa's axe. And so that's pretty cool to me. The third thing is that I'm going to remove the crud from this axe using this. The first thing that I'll need to do is get rid of the remnants of this old handle. Now I want you to think about something with me. I pulled this out of the inside of a shop. This has been inside for who knows how many years. Look at this handle. Look at how weathered, like, <laughs> this handle's been broken for a long, long time. A long, long time for this to have gotten in that bad a condition. Not bad condition, but you know what I mean. Worn down that far inside somewhere. It just makes me really wonder what's the story behind this little axe. And I suspect that I will never know what the, what the original story was. So I guess I'm going to have to start from scratch with my own story, right? Check out this wedge in here. Let me see if we can get the focus to work again. I got that wedge. It's like a folded over, I don't know, folded over piece of metal of some sort. So, enough babbling. Let me see if I can get this hunk out of there. Ordinarily, I would just do this on the top of my vise, pound that out through there, but this is a pretty special little axe, and I don't want to ding it up where the jaws of the vise come in contact with here. I want to be, I don't know, I want to be careful with it. So, here's what I've got set up here. I don't know how well this is going to work. That's what I'm going to try. Oh, that's going to work. There we go. Restoration's done. I've got a new handle. Yeah, sure. All right, there we go. Let me check out this wedge. What on earth is this? Just a piece of metal. Wild. All right, let's do this right, shall we? And now comes the part about the OxiClean. What the heck are you going to do with the OxiClean, man? Well, here's the thing. Electrolysis works best if you have a solution that conducts electricity well. Water, though you may think otherwise, does not conduct electricity particularly well. So, typically what you use in order to make that solution is sodium carbonate, which is like Arm & Hammer wash powder. I don't have any of that, so I went looking around in the laundry room, and here's what I found. This OxyClean has sodium carbonate and sodium percarbonate. Well, I did a bunch of reading on the internet, and I didn't find any dire warnings against sodium percarbonate. So I'm going to use OxyClean in my solution here to create a conductive solution. I don't know how much is too much, but I'm guessing that much will be about fine. In order for electrolysis to happen, you need a few things. You need an electrolytic solution. You need some electricity. And you need an anode and a cathode. The cathode, in this case, 
is our piece that we want de-rusted. The anode is our sacrificial piece of metal. This is what's going to draw all the rust. There are a few things that you should know before you attempt this. This solution right here, yes, it needs to be conductive. But do not use salt in order to make it conductive. Because if you use salt, when you pass electricity through that salt solution, it's going to release chlorine, and chlorine kills you. Don't do it. With the sodium bicarbonate, sodium carbonate, and sodium pericarbonate, it's going to release some hydrogen. So, do this in a well-ventilated area, so that it doesn't blow up and kill you. Also, for your anode, try to avoid using stainless steel. Because stainless steel, at some threshold that I don't know, and I'll bet you don't know either, at some threshold, stainless steel begins releasing some bad stuff, some heavy metals, some mercury, and some other stuff that, uh, well, I don't want to deal with. Though this looks shiny like stainless, this is not stainless. This is just a coffee can, so it's just steel. In order for this to work, you need a good electrical connection. So what I did, just underneath this little tab where you can't really see, is I took the wire wheel to the uh, edge of the eye here, cleaned it up just enough so I'd make good contact with this little tab, and did the same here. And so that's screwed on there, bolted together, nice and tight. So I'm going to keep a good electrical connection between this axe head and the end of this threaded rod. So it goes into the solution. Now the other part is with our anode. I'm doing the same thing. I've got this coffee can all opened up and it just so happened that this little piece didn't want to detach for me so it's connected about that much. That's just fine. Now I have a little thing to connect to. So I'm using this coffee can because there's a lot to be said for surface area when you're doing this. The more surface area on your anode, the better. All right, now that we've got all that set up, there's something that I can't really show you because all of these bubbles, but I'm going to tell you about it, and you're just going to have to trust that, well, I'm not making it up. You want to make sure that your two pieces of metal are not touching in there because that will kind of negate the whole process. It's a little irritating that we have the bubbles here, but we're just going to go with it. So next, we need to attach a red and a black. Well, you want to attach the red to the anode and the black to your cathode. Don't do it the other way. Just trust me. Red to the anode, junk metal, black to the cathode, restoration metal. I'm going to put my battery charger on 6 volt. No, I'm not. I'm going to put my battery charger on 12 volt. And then I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to highly discourage plugging this thing in before hooking those up. Because you never know when you're going to cross them out. You know. Alright, here we go. Fire in the hole. So yeah, of course that was time lapse. But check out this ring of muck right here. That's a good thing. All that muck is coming up off of our piece that we're trying to get clean. So, I'm going to steal a line from one of my new favorite YouTube channels and invite you to please enjoy this little intermission. So I'd like to try a little something new here, something that I saw on someone else's channel here recently and I really, really liked, and that is to, on occasion, feature another channel, something that I've stumbled upon that I really like and I think that you guys would like as well. So my first one that I'd like to point you guys to is called Mr. Chickadee. Let me give you a brief synopsis. Mr. Chickadee and his wife and a dog and a cat are in the process of building their homestead somewhere in Kentucky, I believe, completely by hand, completely with hand tools. The videography is fantastic. I don't think that I've ever heard a word spoken in any of the videos, but they're captivating. Watching what these folks are doing with their bare hands from building the window frames, I mean, 
every piece of the window frames to the door to the latch on the door whittling out of wood this guy makes a lot of his own tools and then turns around and uses those tools uh, to build his house so go check it out I'm gonna put a link down in the description and uh, I'd love for you guys to go check it out I think you'd really enjoy it okay today is now tomorrow and it's time to see what we've got whoa I think our process is working what do you think let's turn it off and pull it out Ooh, it's warm like quite warm wow I think we've been successful what do you think about that oh that's so cool look at this rust just flaking off and underneath nice clean metal let me scrape this for a minute and then I'll come back and show you how it's looking well here we go I'm gonna go ahead and call this successful look at that all de-rusted and check this out can you read it there we go now we know that it's a plum cruiser axe and oxyclean is successful that's about all I've got time for on this video, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. But uh, I will get working on this, and I'll be back with the next round very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to click that thumbs up. If you comment, please do me a favor. It takes an extra couple of seconds. Please, please, please click that thumbs up. If you, if you genuinely uh, enjoyed this video, please click the thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe. Love to have you stick around. And I will see you on the next video soon. Thanks for watching.